Hey, this is Charlie Thompson, and this is the video for Lab 10 on the Kirpin Climate Classification Part 1. Uh, I know that Lab 7 was just absolutely brutal, and so we're just going to chill with the math for a little bit. Uh, next week, we'll get into a little bit more math, but this week, uh, we're not going to do a lot of math. So let's jump in and take a look at the Kirpin Climate Classification System. So Vladimir Kirpin was a Russian-born German meteorologist, meteorologist, Vladimir Petrovich Kirpin. Uh, and he developed the Kirpin climate classification system beginning in 1884. He was looking at heat zones and later looked at the effects of vegetation, or rather looked at vegetation as something that he could use to help classify climate. And part of the beauty of the Kirpin system is in its simplicity. There are two principal climatic components that we use in the Kirpin system. Temperature patterns, which is just another word for latitude. And precipitation patterns, which is also largely driven by latitude, followed by continentality along with rain shadow effects. So at this point in the semester, this is all just review from physical geography that patterns of temperature are primarily a function of latitude, temperature range, which is going to be important later, temperature range is a function of latitude and continentality. So the Kirpin system just uses these two very simple metrics. All you need is a thermometer and a bucket, and you can gather data to classify climates using the Kirpin climate classification system. And that's really part of, part of its enduring appeal is that the equipment that you need to collect data, really, really simple. So Vladimir Kirpin divided Earth into five different climates, the tropical, dry, mesothermal, microthermal, and polar climates. This is the map from the, the book that we're using in lecture showing the climates with the tropical, and it's the same system, the book uh, Geosystems Core actually uses the Kirpin climate classification system. The only difference is that we don't use his system of letters. We use his descriptive titles. So in the Kirpin system, tropical rainforest is an AF climate. We're going to call it, or rather in lecture, we call it tropical rainforest. Here we'll call it an AF. Tropical monsoon is an AM. Tropical savanna is uh, an A... Savanna, if it's savanna, it's raining in the summertime because the ITCZ is overhead, so it's winter dry, so it's an AW climate. So all of these all of these climates have Kirpin two or three letter designations for those climates, but we've got the tropical climates in the tropics, and then we've got the dry climates, and then we've got the mesothermal. Meso means middle, middle temperature climates, and then as you get inland and really far north, you get into the microthermal climates. The microthermal climates or snowy forest climates have the biggest temperature range of any of the climates on Earth. High latitude, extreme continentality generates a 183 degree swing between the summer hot temperature and the yeah summer high and the winter low. 183 Fahrenheit degrees over here in Yakutsk in the Siberia. And then there's the polar climates at both poles where it's just cold year round. So really, another way of looking at it, tropical climates, they're hot year-round. Dry climates have an annual moisture deficit. Mesothermal climates have a summertime and a wintertime, and the winter is above freezing. Microthermal climates have a summer and a winter, and the winter is below freezing. And polar climates are just cold year-round. So hot year-round, cold year-round. Okay, so let's take a look at the individual climates. So here's, well, this isn't all, this is all of them. There you go. That's all the climates at once. Um, the tropical climates, they're in the tropics. The tropical climates have no chill. Literally every month is above 18 Celsius, 64 Fahrenheit. They have no winter. Every month in the tropics is summer. Those are the A climates, the tropical climates. The B climates are the dry climates. So now we've moved away from the equator under the ITCZ. We've moved under the subtropical high, or we've moved well inland under the subtropical high, subtropical high, subtropical high. The dry climates, 
And then moving out from under the subtropical high, moving up towards the polar front, we have the mesothermal climate. Meso means middle, thermal temperature, so they have a summertime and a winter time. And the winter is above freezing, like you'll notice that they're in, in the American Southeast, up the West Coast, because it doesn't really freeze because of the maritime effect. Same thing. Um, they're in the mid-latitudes, mid-latitudes, the mesothermal, oh yeah, meso, mid, mid-latitude, mesothermal. And then the microthermal or snowy forest climates are farther away from the equator. So now we've got microthermal climates where the winters are below freezing. The summers are above 10 Celsius, 50 Fahrenheit. And you'll notice there are no D climates in the Southern hemisphere because there's no area that's got a big enough area at a high enough latitude, like up here in Siberia, it's an enormous, it's, well, it's the largest continent, and it's at really high latitude. So, you know, 30 degrees, actually that's 20 degrees, so the, the tropics are, are right here, getting into the mid-latitude. So, D climate's the only place you're going to find a microthermal climate with below freezing winter temps in the southern hemisphere that also has a summer, it's probably going to be a highland climate, which is a highland climate, which I'm not going to talk about now. And then the ice climates, the polar and highland. Uh, shoot, I guess I am going to talk about highland. The highland climate would be tropical. Like in this one, it would be tropical because it's in the tropics and everything at a lower elevation is so much hotter that it's a tropical climate. But it's so high that it's below freezing, so it's some sort of highland climate. Same thing, Tibetan Plateau. It's, you know, average elevation, 14, 15,000 feet. And you can't see it on this map, but if we had a more detailed map, you'd see there's areas of the Sierras that are polar or actually highland climates. We're just going to concentrate on polar climates. Okay, let's go through the, the Kirpin climates in alphabetical order. So we've got the tropical climates. The tropical climates are found in tropical latitudes. They, are, they vary from warm and rainy year-round to having a rainy season and a dry season. But the defining characteristic in each of these Kirpin climate types, so the A, B, C, D, E, each of them has one criteria that, that we use to define it. And then there's individual climates that are, are going to be more specific. So to be a tropical climate, the first criteria you have to meet is, is every month warmer than 18 Celsius, which is 64.4 Fahrenheit. If it is, then it's a tropical climate. If it's not, it's something else. So B climates, they have permanent moisture deficits. Precip is less than potet. So because last week was, was so brutal with math, uh, this week we're not going to classify any of the dry climates. There's a bunch of math. We'll get to that next week. For this week, uh, I will tell you this is a dry climate. It's not a dry climate. And you can go from there and classify. But we're not going to go into the math of how to figure out if it's a dry climate or not until next week. So you can relax for this week. The mesothermal climates, they have three months above 10 Celsius. That's the, the summer threshold. So Kirpin used these plant communities. And one of the things he realized is that it's not just enough to have it thaw out in the summer. If you want to have good tree growth, you need to have three months with temperatures above 10 Celsius, which is 50 Fahrenheit. So mesothermal, it's a temperature criteria. You have to have three months above 10 Celsius, and the warmest or the coldest winter month is above freezing. So the winters don't freeze, and they have a summer period. So remember, these are mid-latitudes. As we move away from the mid-latitudes towards the poles, it's going to get colder and colder in the wintertime, especially in the wintertime. And it's kind of funny that, well, let's, let's move to it and then I'll talk about it. So the, the D climates, the microthermal or snowy forest climates, they're found at mid to high latitudes. And remember, as you move north in latitude, as I just said, the summers, uh, the winters, the winters, as you move away from the equator, the winters get colder and colder. And I was thinking, well, they're probably going to wonder, what about the summers? Well, the summers are kind of funny because at high latitude, the, the angle of the sun is pretty low, but they have very long day lengths. So the total amount of energy as you move at, you know, at the equator, it's like the same amount of energy every day, direct sunlight. So the sun that's coming in is really intense and it's 12 hours long. If you're at 60 degrees north, 
you could have an 18-hour day on the summer solstice. So six more hours of sunlight it's probably not getting more than like 30 degrees above the horizon. So the amount of energy every hour isn't a whole lot, but there's 18 hours of it. So the winters change a whole lot as you move farther north, especially because you get less energy because the sun angle is low and you also get less energy because the day length in the wintertime is so low. So they have three months, they, they have summers, these microthermal or snowy forest climates, they have three months of summer and the winter by definition is below freezing. So if the winter is below freezing, it's a microthermal climate as long as they have a summer. If it's freezing all year, then it's a polar climate found at high latitudes and polar regions, cold all year, no summer. In fact, by definition, every month is colder than 10 Celsius, 50 Fahrenheit, which is clearly 10 degrees warmer than zero, 10 Celsius degrees warmer than zero. So Kirpin system uses two or three letters to designate a climate. For example, I said tropical rainforest is an AF climate. The first letter tells you the general temperature. So with the AF, the A tells you it's tropical, the F tells you it's wet year round. The second letter tells you about the timing of the rainfall. Is it wet year round? Is it rainy in the summer? Is it rainy in the winter? Third letters, the third letter tells you more about the temperature during the year. Like is the summer exceptionally hot or is the winter exceptionally cool? So the Kirpin system uses two or three letters. The first letter tells you the general temperature the general temperature, every month is above 10 degrees, every month is below 10 degrees, or rather every month is above 18 to be a tropical climate, every month is below 10 to be a polar climate, to be a, a sea, a mesothermal, you have to have three months of summer and one, and the winter has to be above freezing. Second letter tells you about the timing of the rainfall. And then the third letter tells you more about the temperature during the year. So two of those climates that I've mentioned, two of the climate categories. The tropical climates, it's hot year-round, and the polar climate, it's cold year-round. They don't have seasons, so they only have two letters. They don't have three letters. The A, the A climates, and the E climates only have two letters because they don't have seasons. So going from the equator to the poles, the order of Kirpin climates goes A, B, C, D, E. However, as Kirpin was setting up this system, he realized that you could have a situation where a climate could meet the criteria for more than one climate type, which would be incredibly confusing. So he said there's got to be an order of precedence. If, it's, if it classifies as this kind of climate first, then that's what we're going to call it. And so you have to check them in this order. And I'll go through examples of how we do this. Uh, e, you, the first thing you do is, is every month below 10. If it is, it's some sort of polar climate, and then you turn to the detailed information to figure out which kind of polar climate it is. If it's not a polar climate, then you check to see, is it a dry climate? There's a bunch of math that you do next week. There's a bunch of math that you do to determine, is it a dry climate or is it a humid climate? Humid just means it gets enough moisture. If it's not a dry climate, then you check to see, is it a tropical climate? Is every month, does every month's temperature, average temperature, is it over 18 Celsius? If it is, it's a tropical climate, and then you go to the detailed information to figure out what kind of tropical climate it is. If every month is not over 18, and it wasn't a polar and it wasn't dry, then you go to the next one, you see if it's a mesothermal climate. Does it have three months over 10 Celsius? Does it have the coldest month above zero degrees? If so, it's a mesothermal climate. Then you go to the detailed information to see what kind of mesothermal climate it is. And that, but if it's not a mesothermal, it has to be a microthermal, a declimate, microthermal, or snowy forest, which would have three months above 10 Celsius and the coldest month below zero. So the first question you got to ask is really simple, and thank goodness doesn't involve any math. You just go, well, first question is every month colder than 10 degrees? If yes, if every month is colder than 10 degrees, then you go to the details to figure out what kind of polar climate it is. If not, then you look, you check to see, is it a dry climate? Does it meet the criteria to be a dry climate? If it does, you go to the details and figure out which kind of, is it a desert or steppe? And then is it hot or cold? 
Uh, but if it's not a dry climate, then you check, is it a tropical climate? Is every month warmer than 18 Celsius? If yes, it's a tropical climate, then you got to figure out, is it a rainforest or monsoon or savanna or what is it? If every month isn't over 18 Celsius, then you check, is it a mesothermal climate? Is, is the summertime, do you have three months over 10 Celsius and winter warmer than zero? If so, then you check to see what kind of mesothermal climate it is. And if not, then you double check. I mean, it has to be a D if you've done everything right. And so if you get to the to this point and it meets the criteria, three months over 10 Celsius and the coldest month is below zero, then you go to the details to figure out what kind of snowy forest climate it is. If it's not, you've made a mistake. I would go back to the polar climates and run through, check your numbers and run it through again. Okay, cool. This is the Kirpin climate classification flowchart. And uh, I would suggest going to take a look at this, open it up, print it out, whatever. Uh, ooh, yeah, print it out maybe, except then also check back because it's a Google Doc. So as the semester goes along, if people say, hey, I've got a question and I, I realize that there's something I can do to improve this, I'm going to change it and make it better. So let's take a look and see how we use this. Okay, so here's the Kirpin climate classification flowchart. For starters, the Kirpin system has five climate types, A, tropical, B, dry, C, mesothermal, D, microthermal, E, polar. The first step is to see which type of climate type it is. The second step is to find the second letter. If it's an E or A, you're done because they only have two letters. If it's not a tropical or polar climate, then the last step is to find the third letter for the B, C, or D climates. So here's the flowchart view. What, what you're going to do is ask those first questions, starting with, starting with polar. Check to see if it's an E climate. Are all months colder than 10 Celsius? If yes, go to the polar E climates. I added bookmarks this semester so that you just need to click and it takes you hopefully to the polar climates. So are all months colder than 10 Celsius? Yes. If, if no, then you've done something wrong. Uh, but if it is, then you look and see, well, is every month below zero? Then it's an, well, actually you, you check in this order, ET and then EF. So is the warmest month between zero and 10? Then it's an ET or tundra climate. If there is no month above freezing, it's an ice cap or EF climate. So step one, is it a polar climate? Is every month colder than 10? If yes, you go to polar climates. If it's not a polar climate, then you go to two. Check to see, is it a dry climate? Go to dry, arid, and semi-arid to check to see if it's a dry climate. We'll do that next week. Uh, so let's just pretend it's not a dry climate. And then we check to see, is it a tropical climate? And here's how you check. Are all months warmer than 18 Celsius? If yes, it's an A climate, and then we go to A climates and say, well, let's check the second letter because every month is above 18, so it has to be a, tri tro a tropical climate. So now we see, uh, first question, is it an AF? Capital A, little f, are all months receiving more than six centimeters rain? If so, it's a tropical rainforest. And if it's not, then you check to see does it have a short dry season? And what I mean by short dry season uh, is the annual precip greater than 25 times 10 minus the precip of the driest month in centimeters. I'll show you an example of that later. Uh, if it's not a monsoonal climate, then we check to see, is it summer dry? Does the driest summer month receive less than six centimeters precip? If so, it's summer dry. If not, you check to see, is it winter dry? And at this point, it has to be, unless you've made a mistake, because the first thing you do is check to see, is it an F? If it's not an F, you check to see, is it an M? If it's not an M, you check to see, is it an S? If it's not an S, kind of has to be a W unless you've made a mistake. I would still check driest winter month receives less than six centimeters precip. Cool. So that's how you do that with a tropical climate. But if it's not a tropical climate, then you check to see, is it a mesothermal climate? Is the hottest month warmer than 10 Celsius and the coldest month between zero and 18? If so, it's a sea climate. Go to the mesothermal 
So then the first thing that we're going to do is actually the first thing I would do is double check is the warmest month over, do you have three months warmer than 10 degrees and is the coldest month warmer than zero? Cool. Let's find the second letter. So the first thing you check, is it an, a CS, summer dry season, summer driest summer month, guess less than six centimeters precip and also less than one third of the precip of the wettest winter month. So I, I guess that one does involve a little bit of math. You just have to see, is it less than six centimeters and is however much it gets in the driest month, less than one third of the amount of the wettest month. Oh, this is important because this says driest summer month. It doesn't actually specify which months those are, and Kirpin did that for us. So summer is either April through September in the Northern Hemisphere or October through March in the Southern Hemisphere. That's a big deal that not all of the climate stations that we will be looking at are in the Northern Hemisphere. Some of them are Southern Hemisphere, in which case our winter is their summer. So you have to look at October through March to determine uh, if it's got a summer dry season. So if you got to the flowchart and you've decided it's a sea climate, the first thing you check, is it a summer dry? If it's not summer dry, is it winter dry? Where the wettest summer month gets 10 times, 10 times the rain of the driest winter month. That math at least is pretty easy. If it's not an S, you check to see if it's a W. If it's not a W, it's got to be an F with year-round precip. So that's so. At this point, we would know it's we would know the first two letters. It would be a C, either C S, C W, or C F. And then we go to the third letter. And this one again doesn't involve math. So you check in this order: A is the hottest month over 22. If so, then it's a C whatever A. If it's not, then it's going to be a C, whichever one of these three you, you found. B, if you have at least four months above 10 Celsius. If you have fewer than four months above 10 Celsius, then it's a C, whatever, C. Uh, and the coldest month is above negative 38. All right. If it is not a C, then you check to see, is it a D climate? And you have to check, is it a D climate? There's no math. Is the warmest month over 10 and the coldest month below zero? If so, it's a microthermal climate. If it's not, you've done something wrong. Double check your numbers and start over with E and run through the flow chart again. But if it is, the warmest month is hotter than 10 Celsius, the coldest is below zero, then you go to the D climates Use the precip criteria from the C climates above. So you, the C and the D climates use the same criteria for precip. So you use this flowchart to figure out the, the second letter for the D climates. And then when you're done finding the second letter, then you find the third letter, which is summer or winter temperature information. If the summer, the hottest month is over 22, like 22.0001, great, that's warmer than 22. The warmest month is warmer. It's going to be a D something A. If the, if the warmest month is not above 22 and there are four months above 10 Celsius, then it's a D something B climate. If you don't have at least four months above 10 Celsius and the coldest month is above negative 38, then it's a D something C climate. And finally, if the coldest month is below 38, it is some sort of crazy subarctic climate. It's going to be a D something D climate. Those are only found in Siberia. Siberia is the only place that has high enough latitude with enough land around it, and it's far enough from the ocean to generate winter temperatures that are regularly below negative 38, which is crazy. So there's two other things that I wanted to, to explain, and that is this is the full list of how to check Kirpin climates. So the Kirpin climate classification system, it, this is the, the, yeah, you check to see, is it an ET? Well, and, and we're like uh, doing it slightly differently, but this is the full order of uh, operations, the full order of preference. You know, like in math, you do this, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, 
or PEMDAS or whatever acronym you're using now, parentheses, inner, outer. We do the same thing when we're using the climate classification system. We check them to see, is, is it an E? If it's not an E, then we check to see, is it a B? If it's not a B, is it an A? If it's not an A, is it a C? And if it's not a C, is it a D? And the full, the full range would be checking to see, is it an E? Well, then you check EF, or rather ET, and then EF. And then checking the Bs, 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 BW, BW, or hot step, cold step, hot desert, cold desert, rainforest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've hidden those here someplace. So all of these abbreviations like ET and EF and BSH, they all have descriptive names. And like I said, I've cleverly hidden them from you. There they are. ET is tundra. EF is frost. BSH is a hot step. BSK is cold step. BWH, hot desert. BWK. Okay, so some random things that might help you. The Kirpin system makes a lot more sense if you speak German. I don't. Like E in the polar climate sense for ice, which is German for ice. The polar climates are ice klima or ice climates. The second letters for the A, tropical, mesothermal, and snowy forest climates, those are the ones that tell you about the timing of the rainfall. So F stands for flaked, which means wet. If the climate is rainy all year, it's an F climate. M stands for monsoon. So you've got a winter dry period. S stands for summer dry and W stands for winter dry. Uh, the third letters for the B climates also have meaning. The H stands for heiss, hot, like the hot desert, BWH. And the K stands for kalt, cold, like the BWK, the cold desert. Um, and the third, the third letters for the A, C, and D climates, they just A is hot, B is warm, C is cold, and D is hella freezing. Coldest month, colder than negative 38, only found in the D snowy forest climates. And then I just thought this would be helpful as a review. The Kirpin climate symbol is a two or three letter combination, AF or CSA. The Kirpin climate name is the descriptive name. So like for the AF climate, AF is the symbol. Tropical rainforest is the climate name. For CSA, that's the Kirpin symbol. And the climate name is Mediterranean hot summer. All right. So you've got that. You know where to find the Kirpin names. They're right after the Kirpin symbol, Kirpin symbol, Kirpin name. All right, let's take a look at the polar and highland climates. And this is very quickly. We're just going to go through again as review what we just went through on the order of checking the Kirpin climate types. So the first question you ask is, well, is it a polar or highland climate? Are all the months colder than 10 Celsius? If yes, it's a polar climate, and then you go look at the details, and then you try to figure out, is it a tundra climate, or is it an ice cap climate? If all months aren't colder than 10, then we go to the next climate, the dry climates. If it's not polar, check to see, is it a dry climate? So with the two types, there's step with precip less than this dryness factor, and desert it's twice as dry, precip less than half of the dryness factor. So another way of thinking of it with the steppe climate, that the precip is less than potet. And with the desert, precip is less than half of potet. So with the steppe, you don't have all the water that you need. And with the desert, you have less than half of the water that you need. And if it doesn't meet the, the threshold to be a dry climate, then we check to see, oh yeah, we'll, we'll do this next month or next, next month, next week. We'll find the threshold number calculated by doubling the average annual average temperature, adding a dryness factor based on when it, when the rainy season is. But we checked it wasn't dry. So then we check to see, is it a tropical climate? Is every month above 18 Celsius? And then if it is, if every month is over 18 Celsius, then you check to see the second letter is classified by the length of the rainy season. 
So if all months get 12 inches or yeah, six centimeters, sorry. If all months get six centimeters or more, it's an F. It's a monsoonal climate. If the average precip is greater than 25 times 10 minus the precip of the driest month in centimeters, it's a, a S if it has a summer dry season where the driest summer month gets less than six centimeters precip. And if the winter, the driest winter month receives less than six centimeters precip, then it's an AW. So you check in this order, check to see is it an A climate. If it is, then you check AF. If not AF, AM. If not AM, AS. If not AS, you check to see is it an AW climate. If it wasn't a tropical climate, then you check to see the next climate group, mesothermal climates. If it's not B, check to see is it a C. If the hottest month is over 10 Celsius and the coldest month is between 0 and 18, then it's some sort of mesothermal climate. Then you check to see the timing of the rainy season. In this order, S, you check to see does the driest month get less than 6 centimeters precip and is the driest summer precip less than one third of the precip of the wettest winter month? If it's not an S, you check to see, is it a W? Is the wettest summer month 10 times more precip than the driest month? And if it's not a W, then it has to be an F with year-round precip because you've checked to see, was it an S? If it wasn't an S, you check to see, is it a W? If it's not a W, it has to be an F unless you've made a mistake. So that's the way you check, check the second letter. Third letter is the warmest month over 22. It's a C something A. If it's not, but you have four months over 10 Celsius, it's a C something B. And if it's not a B, then it's a C something C with the coldest month below 22, but warmer than negative 38 Celsius. And if it's not a mesothermal climate, then we check to see if it's a D, a microthermal or snowy forest climate. If the hottest month is warmer than 10 Celsius, but the coldest month is colder than zero, Congratulations, it's a microthermal climate. The temperature criteria are the same as the C climates, but because the D climates have subfreezing temperatures, they've added the D temperature category for months colder than negative 38 Celsius. Uh, the second letter, the rainfall criteria, you just use the same criteria as the C climates. So once you check the second letter, if you get to the third letter, and if if the coldest month is colder than negative 38, it's a D something D climate. And you're also, you got to be in Siberia because that's the only place that you can actually generate D something D climates. So you can only have one climate type in a region and it's determined in this order. This is the same order from the sheet that we were just looking at. You check to see, is it an E? And if it's on an E, you check to see, is it a B? If it's on a B, you check to see, is it an A? If it's on an A, you check to see, is it some sort of C? If it's not a C, you check to see if it's a D. Some terms, the Kirpin climate symbol is the two or three letter abbreviation. Oh, hey, this is review, sweet. AF, BWH, CSA, and the capitalization is important that it's only the Bs that have two first letters that are capitalized, everybody else, the first letter is capitalized, and then the second and third are lowercase for everything but the dry climates. Their Kirpin climate name is the descriptive name that goes with the abbreviation, like tropical rainforest, tropical rainforest, hot desert, and Mediterranean hot summer. TH is the dryness threshold number. Th not this week. T is the annual temperature average. The average annual temperature. T is the average annual temperature. So, yeah, the the variables can mean different things week to week. So this week, for the climate classification, when I'm talking about T, I'm asking what is T. T is the average annual temperature. That's all the month's average added up divided by twelve. P is total annual precip. And I'll show you where to find both P and T. Those will be given, so you don't have to calculate those. Average, average annual temp, add all the months and divide by 12. The temperature range is the difference between the warmest and coldest months. 
a little bit of math. Be careful with the Southern Hemisphere when you're looking at, at when you think the warmest and coldest months are. The Southern Hemisphere is backwards. So looking at an example, this is the way the data table is going to look. We've got average temperatures for every month. We've got the total precip every month. And then we have the average annual temperature and the total annual precip. So here's P, total annual precip, 181.6 centimeters. And the average annual temperature is 26.7 degrees. So we've got average monthly temperatures, average monthly temp, average monthly temp, average monthly temp. And then we've got the average, the annual average temperature is calculated for you. Monthly precip in centimeters, monthly precip in centimeters, monthly precip in centimeters, and then annual total precip in centimeters. So we're going to use this uh, as an example. So the first question we ask is, is it a polar climate? Is every month colder than 10 Celsius? Uh, no, no. In fact, every month is hotter than 10 Celsius. So is it a B climate? Not this week. So I've done the math. Trust me, it's not a dry climate. Is it a tropical climate? So remember, and we're still trying to figure out just the first letter. We're just going through the order, asking ourselves, is it an E? Is it a B? No. So is it an A? Is it a tropical climate every month over 18 Celsius? Yes. The second letter is the precip regime. So here's your options. F, all months get more than six centimeters. M, monsoon, short dry season, annual precip greater than 25 times, 10 minus the precip of the driest month. S, summer dry, the driest summer month gets less than six centimeters precip. Or W, winter dry, the driest winter month gets less than six centimeters precip. I think these are pretty easy to remember. Because S is summer dry, W is winter dry, F is foiked, wet year round, and M is for monsoon. So at least there's something that my brain can stick a hook into and hang on to. F foiked, wet year round, M monsoon, S summer dry, W winter dry. So the second letter, do all months get more than six centimeters? No, because that month right there is getting 4.3, so it is not an AF. So does it meet the criteria for a short dry season where annual precip is greater than 25 times 10 minus precip of the driest month? Ooh, let's see. So the total precip is 181.6 centimeters. That's given to you. The total annual precip is given. So is 181.6 greater than 25 times 10 minus the precip of the driest month in centimeters? So doing the math, uh, 10 minus 4.3 is 5.7 times 25 is 142. Yes, 181.6 is greater than 142.5, so it has to be an AM climate. Yes and yes. So it's an AM. The Kirp and climate symbol would be AM. The Kirp and climate name would be Tropical Monsoon. Oh, that was fun. If it wasn't an AM, I mean, it was and I, I really hate to possibly mess you up, but if it wasn't an AM, then you'd check to see, is it an, an AS? And if it wasn't an AS, you'd check to see if it was an AW. Example number two. So again, we've got average, average, average monthly, and then average annual temperature. We have total monthly precipitation in centimeters, and then total annual precip in centimeters. So is it a polar climate? Oh, heck no. Is every month below 10 Celsius? No, it's like 28 degrees in July. Is it a dry climate? Not this week. I've done the math. Trust me, it's not a dry climate. Is it an A tropical climate? No. To be a tropical climate is every month over 18 Celsius? No. The coldest month is 3.3 .3 degrees. Is it a C? Well, is the warmest month over 10 degrees? Yes. 
Is the coldest month above zero? Yes. Are there three months over 10 Celsius? Yes. In fact, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. There's 10 months over 10 Celsius. You just need three to be a C. Second letter, rainfall. So it's either summer dry, in which case the driest summer month receives less than six centimeters, and however much it gets in the summer is less than one third of the wettest month. If it's not a if it's not an S, you check to see is it a W, winter dry, where the wettest summer month is 10 times more precip than the driest winter month. And if it's not a W, then it's an F with year-round precip. All right, so second letter rainfall. Is it a summer dry? Does the driest, well, the driest summer month is getting zero. And zero is less than a third of uh, let's see, the wettest winter month is going to be 5.6. So yes, zero is less than one third of 5.6. So the third letter then tells us more about temperature. Is it an A, B, or C? Is the warmest month over 22? Is the warmest summer month colder than 22, but you have four months over 10 Celsius? Or do you not even have four months over 10 Celsius, but the coldest month is still above negative 38? So, uh, warmest month above, yeah, and it, and it oh, yeah, I was going to say, it, it does, if it's above 22 at all, 22.0001, congratulations, it's a hot summer. So, this would be a CSA, would be the symbol, well, CSA, mesothermal climate, CSA is the Kirpin symbol, Mediterranean hot summer is the Kirpin climate classification name. Oh, that's it for uh, for this video. I hope, yeah, gosh, after last week and the week before, I really hope you enjoy the climate classification. Uh, I'm going to post some other videos of how to, yeah. If you have any questions, please come to Zoom. Please send me a text, send me an email, give me a phone call. Uh, I And I hope you enjoy the climate classification week.